Good day, Inders TV viewers and listeners. Kempower published its fourth quarter results. Today I'm interviewing CEO Tomi Ristimäki here at Hotelli Mestari in Helsinki. Tomi, congratulations. You had nice quarter regarding growth, but on the other hand, order intake growth could be described as a bit low maybe. How do you see the sales growth and on the other hand, the development in the big picture? I see it also from the point of view on achievement from the company side and expectations. Uh, I look at, uh, we tripled our revenues, so of course that's a big, big achievement when we look at more than 100 million mm. company tripling the almost uh, the revenues. But also the quarter uh, order intake was the second highest ever in Kempao history. So it was an achievement on its own. Of course, it's like we commented on certain things, giving bottlenecks in the market. So that is slowing some things down, but actually in the big picture, we see positive, let's say, future ahead. Okay. Uh, your fixed cost grew heavily, as you warned always in previous quarter uh, reports, but what were the main cost drivers? And do you expect similar growth at cost in the year 2024? I think it, it, it's, it tells about the investments, how we make it. It's, uh, people think about investment as CapEx investments, and we are said that we have asset light business models. It means low CapEx investments. But of course, investing into the future, when we look at the resources, uh, buying services to support R&D, uh, doing, doing a lot of work actually to accelerate the company growth, it will require the increased fixed costs. And that, that's a, in nature different than the CapEx investment. But of course, if we want to drive the growth, and we do believe in the good future, so we need to keep doing that. So in, in that way, it shows in the operative EBIT when we are doing the investment in that way. If we look at your, your guidance, your uh, first quarter should be, I have to say, not that eventful, maybe not that high growth, but still you are quite optimistic about the whole year that the company will continue growing. So why are you so optimistic about the whole year if the first quarter is relatively weak? It tells also, so you could read between the lines how we see the length of the bottlenecks in the market. If we look at like the slowness of, of like grid connections, we believe that the electrical grid companies will be able to deliver. Mm -hmm. and, and this is kind of, it's, it's actually combined with the situation that we saw the, a lot of ordering of products at the end of 22, 23, and this applying the whole DC charging market because of this previous component availability issue. Everybody was ordering in time and, and long backlogs because of that. And when the backlogs are getting shorter, the component availability is, is, is basically, it's not non-existent, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a lot better situation. It will shorten the backlogs. And then the order intakes will be, and orders will be placed a lot closer to the actual delivery dates. So this, this, this will affect the numbers in, in, in that way. And when we have the bottlenecks, it will be shown in the next quarter results. So this is actually what, what, what we see here. And of course, the new product launch will have some, some delays there, what actually this big shift in, in new technology will, will make. Hmm. Uh, about the new technology, you introduced the new next generation silicon carbide-based charging solution. Uh, what's the meaning of these solutions for the long-term growth and competitiveness of Kempower? I think it's a, it's a kind of, uh, it's like any chip technology. Now, now we are talking power chips. This is my world for the last 25 years working in, in power electronics. My career has been working around this IGPD technology, which was the previous and still very much used uh, technology. Uh, way of how to do power chips or power semiconductors. SIC is the new one. Uh, it's not new as an invention, but now the actually competitive pricing because the production has developed that it makes it viable to be used in large scale. This also our timing is based on the, how the component pricing has been explained. And what you can achieve is that you have lower losses in the components, so you can actually make designs that are more, more tight in power, so you could deliver more power from smaller objects, or you can increase the efficiency. And these are the figures that you have to keep up with the development, and I'm very happy with the design that our RDI has been working, I would say, almost two years now. Mm. What has been the customer feedback about the new product? I think the customers are excited on this and then was also a reason to comment on that. Mm. So there, there is a certain ramp up period when you are ramping up the new, new products and, and new, new production styles, new PCBs, new, mm. new designs. So 
that will have some delay impact on, on, on this capability of delivering the new, but the plan is quite solid what we have in production. Could you shed more light uh, in the competitive position that do competitors already have similar solutions or does this widen your competitive edge this compared to your com competitive edge? There is, it's, it's a, I had a, this favorite <laughs> German Jain, ja, ja and Nein in the same word, so some do, some don't. Mm. Uh, I think our, our, we have some advantages, but we would go into very details when we look at that, but it's also keeping up the pace on, on what will be the market standard and doing it, it a little bit before that it happens in, in wider scale. Mm. So it is very important to be there because I think in, when we go into the long run and efficiency, that's what the whole reason why electric vehicles are getting more uh, common than, than, let's say, these ICE vehicles because the efficiency is better. I think uh, saving our future has a lot to do how efficiently we use the energy that we are producing. So this is part of that story. Exactly. What other things you have in the development pipeline? I think as a, as a key thing, actually, what has been very interesting and will be great interest from the North American market is the NACS charging standard. And we will now introduce basically the NACS to all our product range during the Q1 this year. So that's definitely something that has a very positive uh, response from the US market because the car manufacturers have now, let's say, confirmed that mm. they will go together with Tesla into NACS. There is not yet other cars with NACS, but there is a firm announcement from, from almost every car manufacturer. Your operations are now live in the US. Could you describe your sales and uh, distribution work in, in that market? And do you feel that your solutions stand out from the competition? I think the response has been very good. Uh, I, I think it's uh, something that creates a lot of interest in there, especially and we are bringing something different in the market that actually wants it very badly. So they, they see also the fleets of electric cars growing, and it, it's actually our, our um, solution is exactly designed for larger electric vehicles, larger amount of electric vehicles, and also this commercial vehicle space. I, I see a lot of... Uh, progress and interest in the US market to go full electric uh, logistic transportation. So there's a lot of talks already on that with the customers. So when we are filling kind of like a truck depot, bus depots, mm. the size of the products matter and the flexibility of, of our solution just mechanically has an advantage there that you can share the power and actually have a very small footprint and taking as little as possible space in the, in the, in the charging fields. So happy customer feedback thus far. Yeah, that's, I, I think it's a, it's a, I, I'm very happy with the sales pipeline development and what our sales has been accomplishing and what tables they are able to enter with the customers. So that's, I think the response has been very good. I, lastly, I could ask, has there been any change in the, in the very big picture if we look forward to the next 10 years that the cars will go electric every year and so on? Because now there's been some slowdown in the new electric vehicle sales growth figures in, in the different parts of the world. So do you see the big yeah. picture as, as it is? I, I think it's also the matter that, that when you look at the figures, you will get what you want to measure. Actually, the percentage of electric vehicle has been growing still steadily, but the car industry itself uh, with the economic situation is down. So if you look at the quantity, it's, it's getting certain lower because the whole car industry, but the proportion of electric vehicles is getting higher. So that gives actually a very positive trend that basically when the economy recovers from the car sales point of view, that the proportion of the electric vehicles has increased. So that will, how we see it, it will continue. And actually when we look at the car manufacturers news, uh, significant news have been about uh, more investment in the, in the battery electric vehicles, both from the commercial vehicle as the passenger cars. Thanks, Tommy, for an interesting interview. Thank you.